the assault on borax. Arthritis in its various forms, and its close relative, osteoporosis, affect about 30% of the population in developed countries. Osteoporosis is responsible for more long-term hospital care than any other individual disease. This is due to the very high incidence of fractures, and especially the protracted nature of hip fractures. This is a main source of income for the medical pharmaceutical system. If the boron magnesium cure for these diseases should become widely known, this vital income stream would dry up and the system collapse. As this is the biggest and most profitable industry in the world, this cannot be allowed to happen. When Dr. Newnham discovered the boron arthritis cure, it was not a big problem for the pharmaceuticals, because news traveled slowly and was easily suppressed. This is very different now with internet communication. Most research funding comes from the pharmaceutical industry, and nothing has come forward to duplicate Dr. Newnham's findings and other positive osteoporosis studies. Instead, funding goes into the development of patentable boron drugs for limited application, as in chemotherapy, or even to discredit boron. A test tube experiment found that a relatively low dose of about 4 grams of borax can damage lymphocytes. Just like an earlier test tube study showed that vitamin C supplements are toxic. Most positive borax studies now come from China, Japan and Turkey. Furthermore, PubMed, is a publicly funded search facility for biomedical research publications. While other articles for Newnham, RE and ZU, LY, are still listed, the two important borax publications mentioned earlier about the arthritis trial at the Royal Melbourne Hospital and the treatment of skeletal fluorosis in China, are no longer listed, but they belong there and obviously had been there originally. I suspect that they have been deliberately removed to prevent them from being quoted in other research. In addition, increasing effort goes into publicly demonizing borax for its alleged reproductive and infant toxicity. As an example, I recently read an article by a senior scientist of the supposedly Green Environmental Working Group. In it the perceived dangers of borax were so exaggerated, that most comments in effect said. Quote, Thank you for opening my eyes. I did not know how poisonous and dangerous borax is, I certainly will not use it anymore in my laundry, or for cleaning my toilet and kitchen. Unquote. This is obviously a deliberate campaign to make people grateful for banning borax from public sale. For laundry and cleaning purposes, borax substitute now replaces the product previously sold as borax. The AU has spearheaded this campaign. In June 2010, borax and boric acid were reclassified as reprotoxic category 2, suggesting that they may be harmful to the reproductive functions of humans in high doses and the product package must display the skull and crossbones symbol. From December 2010, these products were no longer available for public sale within the EU. While this classification now applies for all of Europe, non-EU countries still have some leeway in regard to public sales. This initiative is part of a globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals, GHS, which is to be implemented as soon as possible. Australia is well advanced on preparing regulations to implement the GHS for industrial chemicals, with new regulations expected in 2012. The European Chemicals Agency gave as reason for their reclassification of boron products. Paraphrased quote. The available data does not indicate major differences between laboratory animals and humans, therefore it must be assumed that the effects seen in animals could occur in humans as epidemiological studies in humans are insufficient to demonstrate the absence of an adverse effect of inorganic borates on fertility. 17.5 mg per kg of body weight each day was derived as a no event level, for male and female fertility. For the rat, decreased fetal weight occurred at 13.7 mg per kg of body weight each day and a safe limit of 9.6 mg per kg each day has been derived. Unquote. What they are really saying is this. While we have no human data, 
Animal studies suggest that for adult reproductive functions, a daily ingestion of about two teaspoons of borax is safe. But to be absolutely sure that no one is harmed, we will ban it totally. Importantly, this ruling is not related to borax in foods or supplements where it is already banned, but only for general use as in laundry or cleaning products, or as insecticides. Because borax is not readily inhaled or absorbed through intact skin, it is difficult to see how even a few milligrams daily could get into the body with the conventional use. If the same standard would apply to other chemicals, there would be none left. The key study in this assessment was published in 1972. Why is this being dug up now to justify banning borax, when it was of no concern for the past 40 years? It does not make any scientific sense, especially if you consider that the main chemical in the new borax substitute, sodium percarbonate, is about three times more toxic than borax. Acute oral LD50 values for animals are from 1034 to 2200 mg per kg of body weight each day. Even the commonly used sodium bicarbonate, with an animal LD50 of 3360 mg per kg of body weight, is nearly twice as toxic as borax. Both of these chemicals have not been tested for long-term reproductive toxicity at the high doses that caused fertility problems in rats and mice. The same applies to washing powders, it has been stated that no toxicity is expected if used in the approved way, or that reproductive tests have not been done. Ingredients in these products are more toxic than borax. Why can they be used in the approved way, but not borax? And how about really toxic items such as caustic soda and hydrochloric acid? Why do they remain available to the public when one of the safest household chemicals is banned, despite the fact that it is absolutely impossible to cause any reproductive harm with the approved use? Regardless of the lack of any scientific credibility, the stage has been set for borax and boric acid to be globally removed from public sale at short or no notice. Even low-level and less effective boron tablets are now tightly controlled by the pharmaceutical industry, and may be restricted at any time through Codex Alimentarius regulations. With this, the medical pharmaceutical system has safely diffused any potential danger that borax may have posed to its profitability and survival. Note. This article is not about curing arthritis. Boron is essential for healthy bones and joints, and supplements may be able to help with arthritis, but chronic conditions often are associated with additional other deficiencies, allergies, microbial infestations and inflammation. All of these factors may need to be addressed.